We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. Voter fraud, voter fraud. We have put together voter fraud. We have put together voter fraud, voter fraud, voter fraud, the most extensive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. Welcome back. Welcome back to Sunday Night Live. It is the zoo. And I've got a crazy bunch of material right here in front of us. But folks, it's Sunday Night Live, and that means you get to ask the questions. You get to direct the show. If you've got a comment about a politician, a businessman, uh, some clown, right, something in the news, if you have a, a, a prognostication about the future, if you think of anything you want to talk about, all you got to do is hit that super chat button up here or do a cash app or PayPal donation and pow, Jolene will get you up on the big board and we'll get to talk about it. This is one of the few shows where you guys have all the room to run that you want. You bet. Now, like I said, I've got lots to talk about and every Sunday night live, we sit down, we have a drink or two, or five, or ten, whatever it takes, and we'll do at least two hours, uh, unless my health gives out, but I don't think that's happened in a long time. Anyways, uh, tonight's good attitude comes by way of Captain Morgan. Uh, Captain Morgan, Ice tea, one of my favorite. <laughs> I may have started a little early. Uh, the captain puts me in kind of a good mood, makes me laugh, it has been a wild weekend news-wise. I know that if you're paying attention, if you're subscribed to the Prepared Mind channel and you hit that notification bell, it's it's down there somewhere. It's down there somewhere on YouTube. Hit the notification bell. You'll get all of my YouTube notifications when anything happens. Now, for Sunday Night Live, I like to start off with a commercial and some stuff. Give everyone a chance to just sit down and settle down. Wake up, right? Get your drink, get your popcorn, because it's going to be a shit show and a half. This is one of the most fun, action-packed shows I can think is on the internet, right? I Look, the information is serious, but I don't take myself too seriously. We cover things in a very serious manner, but we have to have the right freaking attitude, if you know what I'm saying to you, Sparky. Anyways, you guys are here. And uh, I'm here. So let's get it on. Coming to you live from the bunker. It is Sunday Night Live and the Zoo. So I want to start off with a little bit of fun. You you just, you can't, I can't, couldn't believe this when I read it. There's a horse in a horse race. Its name was Heavenly Trump. And it won after the lead horse hit the rail and the jockey just got flung off the horse onto the track. Unbelievable. I mean, you just, some things are just crazy impossible when you see them. You're like, that. how did that happen? Ah, uh, you know, they, we've likened the economic crash to a train wreck. We've likened politics to a train wreck. Uh, when you see a horse wreck, oh, gee, many crickets. And uh, today's blue shirt is the uh, prepared mind. Fuck around and find out. Limited edition shirt. I think we, we had 50 of these made. And you guys gobbled them all up. I kept two for myself. Uh, but uh, I love these shirts. I love wearing them in public. And someday, someday, 
you know, if I get five free minutes where, you know, I don't have anything better to do, uh, which is like never, it would be great to do another t-shirt promo. Uh, everyone I know that has one says they wear them loudly and proudly. And folks, on the street, politics are getting loud. People are saying what they believe, what they think. They're tired of cowering, and that's great. It's our country. We need to be vocal. We need to protect America. We need to stand up and say, ha, ah, not in my country, right? No way. Now, I want to start off with Darcy T, who checks in with a $50 super chat donation. And uh, I hear you, Jolene. I got the messages up, so we're good. You keep me on my messages in the background, and, and I'll be listening to you as well. It's, it's a unique program, folks. Before I get to Darcy T's question, we've got people all around the world. This is an international broadcast, whether it's, whether it's Vincent in Belfast, Ireland, or Remy in the Netherlands, and God bless them for fighting the World Economic Forum. All the way around the world, the Northern Hemisphere, the Southern Hemisphere, we got Argentina, Australia, as far south as Tasmania, people have checked in. Good golly. Let's get it on, folks. So Darcy says, good evening, John. In some of your videos earlier this week, you touched on SADS, SADS, Sudden Adult Death Syndrome. She says, I'm noticing friends, coworkers, and their families who have received the Jim Jones juice. Uh, she's noticed that they're dealing with recurrences of cancer, kidney disease, etc., which they had previously beaten. And now the nuts in charge want to push the monkeypox jab? Your thoughts? Well, <clears throat> in preparation for this, I anticipated it because we're seeing a lot of sad deaths. I really believe, folks, that this is a genocidal operation. I mean, even the president of the United States of America, right, Joe Biden, he's gotten two and two. He's gotten the Jim Jones juice and two juice boosters, supposedly, and I really don't believe he actually did. But then again, he's disposable. He's a useful idiot, folks. He's not necessary for the globalists to take control. He just might have actually gotten the real thing. So he got Cerveza bug, came down with COVID, and then he got, what, Paxlovid or whatever? Well, I mean, if the stuff works, why did you need the other stuff? Because you're supposed to get over the symptoms faster anyway. It's all a crock of shit. But I think, Darcy, that the president himself is a prime example of what's going on. He got it, and then he got it again. Immune systems are being weakened. Now, <clears throat> if you recall AIDS, autoimmune deficiency syndrome, not sudden adult death syndrome, but, but AIDS, the immune system gets burnt up. It shuts down. The body succumbs, uh, I think, to AIDS largely uh, from pneumonia. The, the, the system just, it, the body can't take it anymore can't take any more and it quits, right? Um, what's fascinating to me is that Dr. Anthony Fauci was the physician in charge with the government when AIDS first came out in the 80s. That's right. A much younger mental midget, Dr. Fauci, was responsible for research back then. And he's been involved in research, gain of function research, even though he's denied it. I think Dr. Rand Paul demonstrated without a shadow of a doubt that he's involved in gain of research that is weaponizing viruses. He's been involved in it a long time. I think what they're doing now, putting out this spike protein creating uh, just nightmare of an mRNA cocktail, 
I think it's causing people's body to shut down in varieties of ways as their immune system fails. Once again, you, you, you outline cancer, kidney disease, et cetera. Scary stuff is going on. I mean, scary stuff is going on. We've had a lot of continuing deaths. Can, uh, it, just, it just does not stop, right? I mean, where do I go? I've got so much material here, folks. You know, in Northern Iowa, another athlete has died. Another athlete has died, folks. This time it's a swimmer, right? I, now, a few days ago, I talked about a triathlete. This was a, I'm talking about now about Lily Ernst, right? 21 years old, super athlete in college, dies. Why, folks? Why? Sudden adult death syndrome? I mean, it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right? 44-year-old doctor dies. That's the sixth one in Canada to die in two weeks because they're being forced to take additional boosters. And this was incredible when I read this, folks. Incredible when I read this. Are you ready? Experts. Remember who the experts are? It's anyone but you or me or anyone you would trust. The experts are always those unassailable, right? Unassailable, blah, just the, these gods of science. Yeah, science. Experts are saying cold showers are causing heart attacks in young adults. Cold showers are causing heart attacks in young... Cold shower, folks. Now, I've taken a cold shower. Well, many cold showers. But you, you know what a polar bear club is, right? That's where you cut a hole in the ice and you jump in the frozen freaking water underneath the ice. That's the polar bear club. It's done around the world. People from, I mean, the oldest people you can imagine in their 80s or 90s participate in polar bear clubs all the way down to young children. Never heard about heart attacks. How about this, right? I grew up in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Rivers and lakes on the east side of California are freaking cold because it's ice melting and snow melting in the high Sierra Nevadas and it is freaking cold, right? You jump in that and you come out with goosebumps all over you and your skin is blue. I never heard of anyone having a heart attack, right? Rivers, lakes, even the, the ocean on the west coast will give you hypothermia if you go swimming in the ocean. Well, what have you heard about? The beautiful beaches of Southern California. I got hypothermia in 1989 while swimming off the coast of San Diego. Froze my ass off in the water, folks. No heart attacks. This is a bullshit alert, right? Heart attacks in young adults. People suddenly dying. Sudden adult death syndrome. People with other uh, illnesses just, just succumbing for no reason. I see this as nothing less than an absolute genocidal program that's been unleashed, unleashed. And, and just prior to coming live, there's a, there's this complete, there's a continuing call. I guess, I guess I could call that. It's a continuing call uh, for people to lock down for six months, right? It's, it's mainly coming out of Canada. I wish I could find it. Um, unbelievable, folks. They want everyone locked down. They're calling it a hard six-month lockdown. Why? What is that going to solve? How, what, who is that going to help? Unfreaking believable. Well, folks, here at the Prepared Mind, we question authority. We do. We question the experts. And I ask you to think for yourself. Critical thinking, right? How hard is that? Well, I don't know. We're up over 300 people live in the first 15 minutes. I want to see us get up over six, seven, eight hundred. You can hit the copy and paste button right up there. Get that internet address. Hit the share button. Share this address. Get people out there awake. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about. A lot of stuff to talk about, folks. So let's do it. 
Let's get it on. Jolene, what do we have as far as uh, other questions and comments? We've got Orlando with a $10 super chat donation. He says, hey, John, Semperfy, brother, what do you think about the warnings that New York is getting? I hear there have been helicopters frequently flying around the Hudson River area lately. Well, New York City. I mean, apart from all the warnings about monkeypox, and thank you, Orlando, for the great super chat donation. It goes into the get the fuck back and stay back fund. Uh, and, and I'm staying here, folks. As long as you guys will support me, I'll stay here and get ready for the big fight that's coming. Now, New York City. They've been warned about nuclear war. Nuclear war. Quite interesting, huh? Nuclear war? Really? You know, nuclear bomb attack. And, and you're saying that there have been helicopters flying around the Hudson River. This has the feeling of something insidious, especially since Nancy Pelosi, that's right, 90 Proof Nancy said she was going to go to Taiwan. And China said, hey, 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 you do that and uh, we're going to have problems. So Nancy flew uh, to Hawaii, changed planes and got on a... a <clears throat> a military plane that apparently is going to have military fighter jet escorts. And she's going to do a tour of the Far East, Asia, if you will. But in her last communication, she did not say she was going to Taiwan. Taiwan said they would intercept her and that she flying to Taiwan with military escorts and planes constitutes an invasion now, China, folks, loves to say that they own Taiwan, that Taiwan is part of China, always has been. And Joe Biden, when China threatened to um, try and steer Nancy's plane elsewhere, uh, fire warning shots, and if not, they could just light her up and any other military aircraft entering that airspace. Joe Biden said nothing. Joe Biden said nothing about it. Now, the reason I'm bringing up China, Taiwan, and Nancy Pelosi is who else would need to, uh, would, would benefit from bombing the United States of America? Who else really wants to fight the United States of America? Who else has enough balls to try and fight the United States of America? Now, I don't think it's Russia. I really don't. I think Putin is too smart for that, right? There's no way... Uh, lighting up New York City with a nuclear weapon is going to help Russia. Right? It, it would it would have the appearance of it of China being the one, because of all of their shall we say attitude. They love to tell everyone about. Right? They're very they have a lot of attitude. Well, uh, it wouldn't surprise me, folks, if something happens in New York. But I can't go so far as to say who it's going to be, right? Who we can actually blame, right? Would it be China? Would it be Russia? How would we know? It's a bomb that goes off. I think we're being set up. I really do. I think we're being set up. Unbelievable, folks. Can you feel it? Can you sense it coming? All right. Oh, we got a cash app here from Michael Brown. He sent in a 223 super chat donation. Thank you, Michael. And no question, <laughs> I can't remember. Does Cash App have a way to put in some comments? Jolene, if you see Michael Brown and he's got a comment, go ahead and throw it up there on the on the board here and I'll read it. Thanks again for all your support, Michael. Appreciate it, brother. And uh, let's see. Let us move on if we shall. Uh, <clears throat> we've got Chin Music with a $9.99 Super Chat donation. He says, oh, this is terrible. George Floyd has been sober for over two years. When do we go back to normal equity ratios in TV commercials? Um, I, I think what you're referring to is the number of people of color in television commercials. That's a good question. I don't know. Uh, you, you know, woke corporations as well as normal corporations want to appeal to all Americans to come and buy their products. Now, the woke corporations, of course, 
throw it on our face, make you feel guilty for being whatever color you happen to be as if you had a choice. Uh, you know, and they want to let everyone know they virtue signal everything. But I believe there's a lot of corporations out there that just want to give the appearance of inclusiveness. They want to avoid any accusations, right, of, of not representing America. So you see uh, an awful lot of different looking people in commercials. Uh, I've commented uh, probably quite a bit, mostly in private, about how people look on TV today. It used to be that regardless of your color or ethnicity or gender, in order to be in a commercial, you had to be exceedingly handsome or beautiful. You had to be the macho man or the beautiful woman. And now, right, TV is just people you see on the street. It's changed a lot. It really has. Quite a bit different. I don't know if they're going to go back to the old ways, folks. They certainly don't do TV commercials today like they did in the 1980s, the 1970s, the 1960s, 50s, <laughs> when TV first came out. Things change. I wonder if they're just going to continue to change or whether we could get some sort of retro thing. We're going to talk about retro culture here coming up. But first, I want to talk about modern culture. Hang on to your Super Chat donations. If you've got a donation and a question, a comment, a person, a prognostication, you want to look at past history, you want to talk about philosophy, whatever you got, Super Chat donation button will get you, bam, your comments down there. But for now, I want to talk about something that's important to me. Protein, food. We've been told we're going to not own anything and we'll be happy. That's what Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum, the Davos douches, the Bilderberg Illuminati type guys said is going to happen. And this has come out for many years. We've, we've heard this. You'll own nothing and like it. And World Economic Forum and Great Reset. And we were told, by the way, this is a $50 donation drink right there. It's waiting. <laughs> um, we were told all this, and now it's happening. You'll own nothing. You won't own private vehicles, we're being told now. World Economic Forum says no more private vehicles. World Economic Forum is now working in concert, hand in hand, making deals and agreements with another quasi governmental institution called the United Nations, which needs to be disbanded. At the very least, the United States of America needs to not participate or fund it. It doesn't do anything American, in my opinion. Now, <clears throat> let's get back to Klaus Schwab and what he's doing for us. And Bill Gates and other World Economic Forum types, they're pushing bugs, folks, bugs. Bugs for food. And bug burgers are now hitting the shelves in Germany, folks. Featuring high protein and low saturated fat levels. Really? High protein and low saturated fat? Wow, bugs, huh? Although they have slightly high sodium, they are the perfect food to fill your tummy during the next family cookout. They're not vegan, but they're tender and juicy bug burgers, folks. Insectin burger. That's what the package says. Insectin burger. Folks, insectin means insect. Insect burger. No joke. Unbelievable. Makes me want to spit up. Insects. Do insects have nutrition? Oh, they're high protein. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's coming, folks. They're going to keep pushing this shit. They're talking about it in Canada. We have American celebrities pushing it, eating bugs with chopsticks. Oh, beautiful, awesome, you know, nice chef. He's chefing it up and cooking bugs. Bugs, folks. Insects. Wow. They're going to keep pushing it. Insects have to get their nutrition from somewhere, folks. What are they going to do? Feed dead humans to the insects and then feed the insects to us? Is that how this is going to work? I just, I, I, it's sickening. It really is. It's, it's sickening, folks. But they're coming. They're pushing. And people are pushing 
back. Okay, where are we at? <clears throat> where are we at? Jolene, let me know on the back channel what we're doing and what we're up to, and let's move forward with this. We've talked about all of the countries, all of the countries around the world where protests have, have just gotten out of control. Some countries are politely protesting. Others are becoming more and more, shall we say, vociferous. Now protests have erupted in Bangladesh. Why? Well, they're cutting power and they're raising the cost of electricity and gas and diesel and fuel. Bangladesh, folks, another country. Well, the police, to put this protest down, decided they would injure a bunch of people and they even killed somebody. And so now they not only have a protest against uh, the power and fuel, but there's now a protest against government and police for that. It's getting out of hand, folks. It's getting nasty out there. So Bangladesh is heating up. Well, before I get into more of this, right, let's see what we have out there. Jolene, do we have a super chat donation to get to before I get too far behind? And the answer is yes, it's Timothy Mahoney, the uh, young man <clears throat> who checks in with a 1999 super chat donation. Thank you, Timothy. I hope all is well. I hope you're doing well in Europe. Well, at least that's where you were when you last checked in. He says, uh, late just for the zoo, the New York warning seems more like they're getting ready for a dirty bomb. Uh, why not play more into the bio scare? People take uh, with take a knee to a big bomb mixed with biological impacts. Uh, I really doubt, Timothy, that they would light off like a, a 100 kiloton nuke in New York City. I'm more in line with your thinking that it would be something smaller, dirtier, nastier, and uh, it would it maybe would be paired with. Um, chemical and biological bombs set off in other places, kind of a smorgasbord of nastiness. It would, it would serve to impact people, I think, in a greater way, because it's not just a nuke, or it's not just a biological weapon, or it's not just chemical weapons. It's a combination of all things. You don't know what's coming for you next, America, whether it's in New York City or San Francisco, right? And uh, yeah, the monkeypox. <laughs> monkeypox is another way to get people to line up to get more Jim Jones juice. You don't know what's in these things. Oh, but it's safe and effective. You know, well, uh, fortunately for most of us, I don't think we attend homosexual orgies. And so we don't have to worry about monkeypox or monkeypox vaccines. But it doesn't mean they won't push them. Doesn't mean they won't try and scare us. And uh I think they'll get a lot more mileage out of a dirty bomb and chemical weapons and biological threats. Uh, that's where I think they want to go. I think that's the next big step. The only thing bigger than that would be, well, a very large uh, asteroid impact or potentially the alien invasion scenario. They're running out of things to scare us with. I mean, they're pushing. They're pushing. They're pushing all over us, are they not? They're really pushing on us to scare us. And it's just, it's almost like we've seen all the horror movies. We've seen all the alien movies. We've seen all the disease movies. We've seen all the zombie movies. We've seen all the foreign invasion movies. We've seen it all. We've been scared to death already. So what makes them think we're going to continue to be scared, right? <laughs> ah, I tell ya. Okay. Right. There's they they're they're trying. Now. <clears throat> okay. All right. Thank you, Jolene. Now, this is incredible. I I they're gonna try something. Oh, they're gonna try something. Well, no matter where you at, I think having a gas mask, an NBC gas mask. That's nuclear biological chemical gas mask is a good idea. Keeping your favorite horse medications and uh, malaria medications around, I think is a great idea. Having potassium iodide for a nuclear, especially a dirty bomb, uh, having that around is a good idea, right? Now, incredibly folks, 
we're supposed to believe that China uh, wants to get rid of us. And I actually believe they're a much bigger threat than Russia. But Russia, folks, is doing something very interesting also. At this moment, right, are, are you ready for this? Oh, by the way, we just surpassed 425 people live. That's more than President Biden gets on YouTube, folks. He gets maybe a couple of hundred, and they're probably all White House interns. And they're being told, you, 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 all you guys go sign on and start start signing nice things. <laughs> it doesn't work. Right. We beat every week. We beat Joe Biden's numbers. Uh, and, and, and folks, yeah, and he got 91 million people live, too. Right. OK. <clears throat> so, yeah, Joe Biden, my ass. <clears throat> 430 and climbing on the uh, live stream. Sunday Night Live, where you guys get to direct the show, where you get to ask the questions and just lay it out there. What do we have next, Jolene? We've got Ramey Mersch from the Netherlands with a 20 euro super chat donation. He says, in Indonesia, 26 doctors death by the Jim Jones juice. This, it, it's, it's a nightmare, folks nightmare i read some information over the weekend and thank you ramey now folks ramey is in the netherlands the netherlands netherlands that is where the farmers have all driven their tractors and they're blocking highways they're blocking interstates they're blocking freeways whatever you want to call them in europe they're over there blocking them they're setting bales of hay on fire they're spreading shit all over the government buildings they're saying, hey, you want to kill farming? You're not going to eat. Why would you do this? Well, huh. yeah, that's a great question. Anyways, Ramey, I'm so glad to have you check in. And yeah, 26 doctors, huh? It, what country was that again? Jolene, pop that back up if you will and can. Um, it's incredible. That's in Indonesia, a very large nation. Millions and millions and millions of people, 26 doctors. All around the world, countries are saying, Everyone has to get the Jim Jones juice. Why? When the numbers don't support it. Why? Incredible, right? We've seen in just the last two weeks, six doctors in one city in Canada. We got 26 in Indonesia. All around the world, we're getting reports of people dying from it, getting serious injuries and dying. And earlier, Darcy T said, hey, look, I know people. Now, now, if I said, I know someone who knows someone who knows someone who heard about something, that's one thing. But when you know people that have gotten it and have died, it's like, look, how many people, right? If I know 100 people and two of them have died and a couple have gotten sick, that's a huge percentage. And a friend of mine, folks, from California that I knew for years and years and years, for 20 years, almost 20 years, got the Jim Jones juice and died of a heart attack. 40 years old. Died, right? And, and we've been noting super athletes who are dying from this. Doctors who are dying from this. Men and women in their teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, doesn't matter. People are dying everywhere. But keep taking it. And keep taking it because, you know, you never know. It just might work someday. It, it's freaking unbelievable, folks. Unbelievable. Wow. I got to have a little of this just to, just to handle that. Ooh, rum. Nice. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> We're climbing on the numbers, so let's get into this topic. This is a barn burner of a story. Are you ready? Super chat donations over here. <laughs> Everything else. Okay, here we are. I got to get a straight face for this one. The Russian embassy in Spain just released a new video making fun of America and Europe. Right? Time to move to Russia, right? Unbelievable, right? There's a 53-second right, a ad when the narrator is speaking English with a nice Russian accent, says, this is Russia. 
delicious cuisine, beautiful women, cheap gas, rich history, world famous literature, unique architecture, fertile soil, cheap electricity and water, ballet, cheap taxi and delivery, traditional values, Christianity, no cancel culture, hospitality and vodka, right? And also this, Russia's economy can withstand thousands of sanctions. Uh, unbelievable, folks. Russia is now trolling the United States of America, the government, and European nations. Just taunting the shit out of them all. Right? Now, it's, it's really incredible. It's really incredible, folks. When I was a young man... Growing up during the Cold War in the 70s and then the 1980s, we Americans, we knew that the U.S. of A. had the best of everything in the world. We had more freedom, more choices, the best and highest standard of living on the planet. We had the, the best designed cars. We had the best of everything. The women were beautiful. They had big volumes of hair. Gas was cheap. Our culture was one of American secularism and Christian values, right? We had law and order, but really, truly, I mean, where are we today on all of those issues, right? We've got rainbow freaks dressed for gay orgies, walking the streets, shouting in people's faces to accept them or they're going to be attacked. Children are taught in school in America today, not of our greatness and our great history and the fact that we become a better and more powerful and stronger and more dynamic nation, but instead how awful the slave culture is that exists and, and we have it and we can't deny it, how evil our history is with all of the slave owners out there, how kids should chop off their genitals to satisfy their hatred of themselves and their parents. Folks, today politicians are selling our country in the West to rich oligarchs, to the Chinese, without thinking twice about getting caught or being punished for it. Government's out of control. The streets are a disaster. Our infrastructure is failing. Our military has been woked and abandoned by the sickness in the rainbow Pentagon. So after all, maybe Russia does have a few points that were well made in their video. Uh, I will not be moving to Russia. No, 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 and no. Instead of moving to Russia, perhaps we should take America back from the totalitarian scum that are the pretenders of authority and government. Truly, folks, there aren't that many of them. There are 325 to 350 million Americans, I guess. It depends on whether you count the illegals or not. That's an awful lot of millions. And there's not that many folks, real authority figures in the government. They could be tossed out, thrown on their heads very, very quickly. Okay, let us move on if we shall. It is Sunday Night Live and we're 40 minutes into the program. We're almost at 500 people live. It's your show for Super Chat donations. But I'm going to cover this first, folks. Get this. The paradise known as Hawaii. It's literally the most remote set of islands in the world. Whether you're heading to Japan or North America or South America or anywhere else, it is at least 2,500 miles to any other landmass. Hawaii, smack dab in the middle of the Pacific. I've been there a few times. Smack dab in the middle of the Pacific. Beautiful. It's paradise, folks. Absolute paradise. But guess what they've done? They've decided that they are not going to burn coal anymore for electricity. Hawaii has now received its final shipment of coal. Well, electricity prices are going to go through the roof. I guess Hawaii is going to get its own rolling blackouts. Every island there has to have its own power station or power stations to provide power. But to me, it's just unbelievable that they would do this. 
folks, liberals are destroying paradise now. Now, wh when I went to Maui, and I've been to Maui a couple of times, <laughs> I can't afford to go to Maui anymore. But when I've been to Maui, you step off the plane and you smell Hawaii, your, your sinuses open up and you just breathe in this, this luscious, just sweet air that invigorates your body. I didn't smell coal. <laughs> I didn't smell uh, pollution. I mean, you're in the middle of the ocean. Nothing, right? Unbelievable. But they're going to do this, folks. I mean, what's Hawaii going to do? Burn coconut husks and palm fronds for power? It's incredible, folks. Now, in Maui, there was actually this one uh, hillside uh, on the way over to Lahaina, uh, going around the south side of the island. There's a ridge that runs up the island, and it's just covered in windmills. This is back in 2010 and 11. Fucking windmills lining this ridge, like 10 or 11 of them going up. Like two out of 11 spinning. And I thought, imagine all the environmental impact. You know, just cutting a road through the, the precious jungles of Hawaii. Unbelievable. Got it, Jolene? Unbelievable that they would do that and build these just absolutely awful concrete platforms strong enough, folks, to withstand earthquakes. That's right. Hawaii has earthquakes. In fact, there was an earthquake in Maui when I was there. Um, they, so they've got to be these enormously powerful things. And then to stand one of these, these 250 foot tall windmills up there, and then they don't work. I mean, how much money was spent for the power they're not getting? Hawaii is being destroyed. Cerveza bug, really, really, folks, was like just a, a huge nail in the coffin. It's like they, they put the coffin lid down and hammered it down with a thousand nails over COVID by televising the idiots at the airport, telling, you know, the howlies, telling the stupid uh, people to leave and go away and they didn't want to die from COVID. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I got a lot of friends, people who grew up in the islands, not just Hawaii, but the uh, Micronesian islands, Polynesian islands, M Melanesian islands, all over the Pacific. Some of the greatest people in the world, but they're being led by the greatest idiots of all time. Right. Maisie Hirono. What a moron. Absolute abject moron. All these liberals, morons. Let's do this. Let's get to a super chat donation. There's got to be one out there somewhere, and it is donuts <laughs> checking in with a $5 super chat donation. <laughs> this is a great question. Any new information on Las Vegas, uh, New Mexico water shortage? Well, what we know is that just outside of Las Vegas is Lake Mead, uh, you know, the Hoover Dam, and all the water shortage issues there. Las Vegas just got inundated with water. Kentucky got flooded as well. Uh, rather strange, uh, except if you've ever been in the Southwest of the United States of America, you'll see the rain way off in the mountains and you're like, okay, in a couple hours, all that water is not being absorbed by plants and other vegetation because it's a desert. And that water just comes rushing down through. Now, uh, he's also referring to the New Mexico water shortage. And uh, in New Mexico, there's a, a town, a city there, that has very little water left. I mean, when water's done, it's done. It's absolutely done. Um, this is what happens, I guess, when you build cities, build towns, and you don't make sure you've got water. Now, I know water, folks, there's places where there used to be lots of water. And there's places where there was no water and now it's full. I mean, the, the world changes. It's not eternally the same. But this is how it goes. I mean, as, as Lake Mead has gone down, there's old bridges, ruins. When I was a kid in California over by uh, uh, South Bay Area, uh, close to... Morgan Hill. We used to go fishing. This is back when I was in first and second grade. Go fishing at uh, Anderson Reservoir and a couple other reservoirs in the area. 
and water would get down so low you would see bridges at the bottom where there used to be a creek or river and the bridge that went across that well they just flood it and fill it all the way up folks with water store all that water um there's problems there have always been problems i mean if we're talking about the 19 let's see 1976 i was six years old serious drought thank you jolene serious drought enough that reservoirs in northern california dry dried out so what does that say what does that say about rainfall well, we didn't have the same industrialization. China was not chugging out millions of tons of carbon into the air. And we had droughts back in the 70s. In fact, I remember TV commercials and even film. You know, back then we didn't have VCRs. You had to, the teachers had to put a reel to reel, you know, movie projector. And it was about water conservation back then. Water's always been a big issue. You know, when you build giant cities in the desert, you're going to have problems like Vegas. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> very good. Water is a big issue. There's going to be a whole lot more. Now, we've got a uh, <clears throat> we've got a PayPal donation from Matthew D. He sent a 556 five, super chat donation. And he says, my dog food is more nutritional than bugs. Don't forget people. John, can we harass these people on the street or will they send Gestapo after us? I tell you what, I'm not going to tell you to do anything illegal, harmful, dangerous, or mean or awful. But I really think that you and I need to be, at the very least, very expressive with our opinions. When I see somebody with a beard wearing a dress and high heels, I make a point of laughing very, very loudly. I've seen it a few times and you can't help it. You just start fucking laughing <laughs> and you give them a good point. Okay. You said dog food is more nutritional than bugs. I'm going to have to assume that you're an expert in nutrition to make that statement. Because if you were to listen to any of these people out there, they would say, well, no, 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 bugs are much more nutritious. All right. But yeah, dog food, cat food. I would rather eat cat food and dog food than bugs because cat food and dog food is made with animal protein right and cereals that is to say not bugs are they going to put bugs in cat food and dog food now here's the thing with cats and dogs you know they they can't live on anything they can't they can't just eat garbage i mean dogs get into garbage dogs eat all kinds of awful shit and dogs get sick all the time from eating awful shit. But nutritionally, dogs and cats have very specific diets they need to attend to. Cats require an awful lot more protein. Dogs are kind of like us, omnivorous. Right? If they start feeding things to animals that aren't good for them, they get sick and they develop problems. When you look at the average American, do you see healthy or do you see health problems? Where do we assume those health problems stem from? Well, I really believe, I, and folks, truly, I believe it to be a nutritional issue. If you are eating a, a high starch, high carbohydrate diet, and you're not getting enough minerals and vitamins out of it, your body's going to say, I need more minerals. I need more vitamins. It's going to tell you to keep eating and eating and eating, but you're piling in all of these carbohydrates, which are simple sugars. Body breaks them down into sugars and stores them in fat. That's why there are so many of us, I'm including myself, that are overweight, too fat. We're too fat because our diets are not nutritious enough. Right, so feeding feeding humans the wrong way results in problems. Right, potato chips are not particularly healthy. A lot of the foods we eat are not healthy at all. That's why we as humans have so many health problems: overweight, diabetic, uh, poor cardiovascular uh, condition, and throw on top of that, 
the Jim Jones juice, which causes well, uh, a myriad of health concerns. All right. And I tell you what, if I were Maxine Waters, if I were all of the Democrats, if I were Democrat operative, I'd tell you, yeah, go on, harass the hell out of everybody. But understand, folks, they will, if you make a spectacle of yourself, people are going to get your license plate number or someone who knows who you are, and it could find its way back. So I caution you, it could find its way back to Antifa or BLM or some other left-wing radical group. They could follow you home. They could find out where you live. Remember, they work in the government too, and they have no problem breaking the law. Right? They, they really have no problem breaking the law. That's why I keep my location hidden. That's why I move around a lot. You'll see me here in the bunker. I'll go to my mother's. I'll go hang out with Uman. I'll go all over the place, always on the move and keeping my location secret. Because I do not want these assholes all over me. But I'm willing to do this job right here with you because you guys support me and my efforts. It's very critical. We're at 550 people live. I want to hit that 600 number, folks. 600 would be freaking awesome. Let's hit it. 600, 700, 800. I want to get up there. So anyways, will they send the Gestapo after us? Yeah. If you threaten people or they think you're threatening, they'll call the police on you or the Federal Bureau of Investigation because they want to harass you. They want you to be silent. Only they get to, to scream and yell in people's faces. Well, I think that the tide is turning. It's going to be interesting, folks. It's going to be interesting. Always, folks, always be careful. Okay. Uh, Jolene, where are we at? Do we have some more Super Chat donations to take care of? And it is Muho with a $50 Super Chat donation. He says, have another shot on me. Yes, indeed. Woo. The captain is my friend. <laughs> That's right. $50 super chat donation gets me. The Captain Morgan shot. Uh, you bet. So, <clears throat> you know, that's that's particularly nice. It really is. And uh, we got another one all lined up and setting here. So, Muho says, uh, this one is for the end of the beginning of SHTF. That's an interesting statement. The end of the beginning of SHTF. Well, let's just say SHTF has a beginning, a middle, and an end. The beginning of SHTF was, well, I say it was September of 2019 when the banking system absolutely failed and it's repo overnight lending. But most Americans really saw it when they declared the national, international pandemic emergency called Cerveza Bug Madness. And I said, that's it. I poured a drink, lit the stogie, my last one, and said, you know, it's hit the fan. We've come basically to the end of the beginning, right? Their, their lies about the medical crap are absolutely failing. So it looks like we're moving on to war. 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 Looks like we're moving on to war. Muo, that was a great $50 Super Chat donation. And that is the type of donation that keeps me coming back because it supports all our efforts here. It really does, folks. We've got Jolene to support. We've got the entire network. The preparedmind.club is your store. We've got a lot of work to do, a lot of research, a lot of subscriptions. It is incredible. Okay, thank you, Jolene. It's incredible. But Muo's... Uh, <clears throat> We've got more super chat. She's letting me know. But Muo's comment is very important. The end of the beginning of SHTF, and we're moving closer to the middle. And I want to say this. World War III, the odds of it, or base, and I don't mean World War III like nuclear war. I mean the war between nation states in separate places all around the planet. It's heating up. People are picking sides. There are uh, rumors and reports. Well, I would say that they're, they're, they're well-founded because it's coming from the president. Rumors of a Serbian and Kosovo clash. And there's huge border tensions there. The president of Serbia has addressed the nation. 
folks. His name is President Vucic, and he warned against provocations coming out of uh, Pristina, Kosovo. Uh, now, and this is the uh, Russian media translation of his words. Remember, this area of the world used to be Yugoslavia. It used to be communist. Now, he says, the atmosphere has been heated up, and the Serbs will not suffer any more atrocities, Vucic uh, said in Belgrade on Sunday. My plea, he says, to everyone is to try to keep the peace at almost any cost. I am asking the Albanians to come to their senses, the Serbs not to fall for provocations, but I am also asking the representatives of powerful and large countries, which have recognized the so-called independence of Kosovo, to pay a little attention to international law and reality on the ground and not to allow their wards to cause conflict. Now, folks, uh, large country that has recognized the so-called independence of Kosovo, under, remember that, because I want to remind everyone that in 2008, a small breakaway territory unilaterally declared itself independent. Kosovo declared itself independent. And near instantly, the U.S. government recognized Kosovo as its own little nation state. Interesting, isn't it, that a small little area of a larger country can break away and the United States recognizes it. Kind of like, well, uh, Donetsk and Luhansk want to break away from Ukraine and Russia wants to liberate them from their oppressors. Now let's use this other word that, that's come out, folks. This other word, atrocities. Now, let's carry back on. Russia has backed the Serbians since the 1990s when the former Yugoslav, uh, Yugoslavia was dissolved in war. And the NATO U.S. faction backed the moves that were made. Funny, folks, it's always about control and dominance. It's always Russia versus Europe and the United States government. Always, always, always. But it looks like these little wars are heating up. Right? We got Russia, Ukraine. Now it looks like we got Serbia, Kosovo again. We've got China, Taiwan. We have North Korea, South Korea. We have, don't forget, Afghanistan wanting to go into Pakistan. The Taliban there wanting to take over Pakistan. Really, folks, World War I, well, they say it was started when Archduke Francis Ferdinand, right, was assassinated. A, a basic nobody aristocrat out of a nowhere country, yeah, in this area, same area of Europe, eastern, southeastern Europe. Um Fascinating, huh? Fascinating. We can get little wars everywhere. It doesn't have to be a nuclear conflagration. And it doesn't have to be giant empire versus giant empire. It can just be nation states fighting with their neighbors that they've had problems with for a long time. All right, let's move on. I think we've got a super chat donation and we're well over 500 people live. Like you said, I want to get us up to 600. We got Brad Junes with a $2 super chat donation. He says, Cap the volcanoes. No more releases of the gases. Oh, yeah. We need to cap the volcanoes. Volcanoes release more chlorines. Uh, volcanoes release incredible amounts of carbon and sulfur, sulfur oxides and dioxides and sulfur hexamethane and uh, I can't I can't even pretend to make up all the sulfurous words that are, you know, just noxious, toxic chemicals that spew out of volcanoes uh, by the hundreds of tons every every day. Yeah, we should just fly helicopters over them and drop concrete in them. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, the people in the World Economic Forum, right, they, they really believe everything is your fault. They really do. Unbelievable that that's what they think. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable, folks. It's always your fault. And they want you to pay for it. They want you to pay the taxes. They want you to pay the penalty. All right. I got your message there, Jolene. Thank you very much. Uh, before we get to the next Super Chat donation, and that's up to you guys, you get the Super Chat donations. Before I get to the next one, I want to kind of cover 
Senator Joe Manchin, Democrat out of West Virginia, Democrat senator. Um, he was on the, the show this weekend, Meet the Depressed. <laughs> it's actually Meet the Press. Uh, that was NBC's formerly great Sunday political show. That was great about 40 years ago. But uh, yeah, so on Meet the Depressed, uh, Senator Manchin was asked uh, by host Chuck Todd, who is a just total socialist hack. He says, do you want the Democrats to keep control of Congress in November? And when I heard this, I thought, what a ridiculous question to ask a Democrat. So there was a reason he must have asked it. And Senator Manchin said, whatever the voters choose, I've always taken the approach whomever you send me, that your representative, that's your representative, and I respect them. I don't play politics that way. Folks, have you ever heard of a lifelong politician who doesn't play politics? Uh, now, Senator Manchin is a Democrat, and he held out a long time on this Green New Deal, which they're now labeling the Inflation Reduction Bill, right? Like they're going to spend their way into less inflation? How do you pump more money into the system and not have it have a corrosive effect on the value or purchasing power of the dollar? Now, Joe had been fighting this along with uh, Senator Semena, also a Democrat, but they got Manchin. They got him. My best guess is that he was finally extorted, bribed into selling his vote for the BS inflation fighting Green New Deal. But I think he wants the Democrats to lose. I do. I think he wants them to lose. I think he knows that they're going to lose this fall. I think he also knows they're going to cheat like hell. But I think ultimately the Democrats lose power. But people like Manchin are part of the problem. Ultimately, he sold out. He sold out America. He sold out his state. Ultimately, he sold out the people of West Virginia. He sold himself out, ultimately. It's because he is compromised. If you don't have a problem or a flaw or a sin or a crime you've committed, then you can't be extorted. Right? They, they would love to have anything they have, anything at all. <clears throat> On Governor DeSantis or President Trump. But they don't have anything on them, so they're allowed to say whatever the hell they want and do what they want within the realm of the law, right? They're trying to make everything they can up about Trump, right? But that's what happens when someone doesn't have dirty laundry. They can't be controlled. Ultimately, folks, Manchin was owned. Ultimately. You know, Trump is... Is interesting. You know, a lot of people love him. A lot of people hate him. A lot of people like some of his policies and not others. Yeah, he did Operation War Speed. Yeah, he said, let's get that vax out there. Yeah, this and I mean, he's not perfect. I don't think anyone can be perfect and satisfy everyone. Right? I can't satisfy everyone with my performance on these shows. All I can do is ask questions, bring up things that are happening and say, get prepared because, well, take a look outside. Right. We'll wait for you. Go ahead and get up and go look outside and tell me everything's just freaking fine. Well, it's not. Now, the anti let's get back to Trump. Folks, it's actually not about Trump. All of this hysteria about Trump is not about Trump. It truly is about you. You. Anti-Trump hysteria is in, you know, in its in its analysis. It's not about Trump. Right? The the Washington DC scum the D.C. regime, which is full of Republicans and Democrats, it cannot allow Trump to be president. But not because uh, Trump is such a bad person, even though he grates on their nerves and pisses them off. The reason he can't be allowed to return to D.C. is because of who his supporters are. Who are the people that follow him, support him, and encourage him? Me and you, right? That class of people were USA nationalists. That's what we are. We're nationalists that love America. 
we must not be allowed to have representation and leadership who have the power to implement our preferences, which are freedom, liberty, and justice for all, right? So complaints, folks, about Trump are basically objections and complaints about his supporters, the people who want to reelect him. Again, he's not perfect. He makes all kinds of mistakes. He's arrogant. He's brash. He's uh, bellicose. He's Trump, right? Also, those are the same exact reasons we find him so attractive, right? His mean tweets, right? The anti-Trump hysteria that's out there that is being fomented by social media, being fomented by the media, fomented, pushed by political people like Liz Piggy, Shaney, and the other Democrats and rhinos in Washington, that hysteria is, is anti-American, anti-patriot, and it's anti-you. That's their movement. Literally, folks, they hate you and they hate America, and they express it right through their political decisions. And they oppose it through people we want in office, namely, right, we would rather all have President Trump back in Washington than the than the crook and the chicken shit coward that's in the White House now, right? And their belief, the Democrats, is that if Trump is removed, if Trump is defeated, then we, Americans, we're defeated forever. That's what they believe. If they can get rid of Trump once and for all, then we have been defeated, right? So supporting Trump doesn't make us agree with his policies 100%. But it does say that you and I want America first. First, right, above D.C. and above all else politically. America above Europe. America above any other country. No other country gets to tell us what to do. America first, and that's really what they're afraid of, is us having control of our country. Isn't that amazing? It used to be that, that our government represented us, the people the Constitution, our laws, our culture. And so the Russians, you know, they're making fun of that. Hey, you got a, a cancel culture, a woke country, right? Everything that is, is good about America is now hated, right? Our religion here is founded on uh, Christian philosophy, a deist philosophy, that there's an almighty God. Right. That's that's where our laws are based. That's where our belief system, freedom and liberty for the people first. And that's why they hate it the most and they need to kill it. Right. So they they criticize and they castigate and they would criminalize Christianity if they could. They'll certainly punish it in corporations and on the street. It's unbelievable. OK, <clears throat> let's do this. I know I got up on my little soapbox there, but let's get to you. And your Super Chats. Jolene, do we have any Super Chat donations? Yes, we do. We have William C. with a 556 Super Chat donation. He says, I think World War III will kill billions to get the elites closer to that goal of 500 million. What do you think? Okay, first we need to revisit. What's this number 500 million all about? That was on the Georgia Guidestones which have now been demolished and removed. The people who uh, commissioned, created the Georgia Guidestones, which were in the state of Georgia, stood up. One of the tenants there, one of the, the guiding revelations was that a world population, world population of 500 million, keep the population there, would be best for the earth, right? And so we're close to 8 billion now. We need to reduce the population, essentially, 90, 95%. Well, that number, that percentage of people being killed, that's greater than the number that are killed in the apocalypse, the book of Revelations. That's a huge number, folks, 90, 95% for the, the population to be just wiped off the earth. Still, it's a possibility, folks. World War III, 
is not nuclear necessarily. It doesn't mean there won't be nuclear weapons used, dirty bombs, neutron bombs, any kind of bomb. I think World War III is going to be a combination of a lot of things. I think World War III is going to be a combination of nuclear war, biological war, chemical warfare. It's going to be, um, they're going to use starvation, famine. In other words, no food. They're going to use that. I believe they're going to use the bioweapon known as Cerveza bug and the Jim Jones juice. I think they're going to use that as a combination, one, two, and they're going to wipe out folks, people. I really believe it's a genocide on a global scale. The super rich, they have their solution, folks, and we were given the key, right? The words that shall not be named, right? Horse paste and anti-malaria. Those two medications seem to do a great job of stopping Cerveza bug dead in its tracks. I've known too many people now that were sick, took those medications and got over their illness in a day, two days. Right. Um, too bad they don't cure all of our ills. <laughs> right. I've been, I personally have been fighting lung issues for years. That's why I left cold environment and came to the South, right? Warm, moist air is good for the John. Still, what do I think? Yeah, I think they're going to try and kill billions off. It's easier for the, the global elite to control 500 million people than it is for them to control 8 billion. It's easier for them, folks, to use robots, drones, poisonous food than it is to do what? Right? To fight other words, to fight fairly. Right. Why do you think, and I've been pushing this idea for years, why do you think they're so heavily invested in high-tech technology, robotics, and artificial intelligence? Why is it that they're pushing their wireless and satellite network communication systems all over us? And folks getting us to pay for them too. Is it because they really want us to be able to communicate and talk to our kids and talk to our friends and family with a snap of a finger and a push of a button? Do they really give a shit about us? No. They're having us fund, pay for, and build a communications network that covers the entire globe and gives them the ability to communicate with their desired systems, their control network, their grid, their Skynet, if you will. That's what they're after. And that's what they're after. Folks, we're at an hour and 15 minutes already. It seems like I just started. Woo! <laughs> Unbelievable. Between my stuff and your Super Chat donations, we really fill up a Sunday night live at the zoo here, folks. And it's a wild zoo at that. Cheers, Semper Fi. Oh, that's good medicine. Always good. <clears throat> wow. That'll clean you up. Yeah. <laughs> Feels good. I hope you've got a nice beverage and you've got something to talk about. Of course, you know, I've got, well, ooh, ooh, I poured a tall one there, the old captain. So that one will wait for another super chat donation. I think we got one of those. Do we not, Jolene? Yes, we do. It's Gary with a 556 super chat donation. He says, I love how all of these elites and the governments are pushing the fear of climate change when they are the ones actively trying to change it. Thoughts? It's a great topic. They've been trying to convince human beings that we are responsible for changing the planet. Right? There's evidence. We have evidence of the dinosaurs once being here and the dinosaurs being extinct. 65 million years ago is the number they give the KT boundary event happened. A giant asteroid struck the Yucatan Peninsula area and, you know, sent up a big old thing of smoke and killed off the dinosaurs. I'm not so sure I believe that anymore. But uh, anyways, climate change, right? They, they could point in the 1960s and 70s to Western cities, you know, in Europe, 
and the United States of America and say, look at all that air pollution. Got it, Jolene. Thank you. Look at all that air pollution. You know, it, that's bad, right? And it was really bad. It was nasty. I remember growing up in the 70s going, this air is terrible. When I left uh, San Diego in 1988, uh, heading north, I drove and I was like, what's that smell? I could smell Los Angeles, folks, when I was about 50 miles away from it. Unbelievable. And really, honestly, they, they got the air cleaned up. I mean, it's not perfect, but, you know, it's much cleaner. But if you've seen the amount of air pollution that's created by nature, you would be shocked. Uh, volcanoes are one example. Uh, fires are an incredible example of all the pollutants that are put in the air. You know, it's, you know, human beings, we, we do good things and we do bad things. Right. Look at all the crops we plant. Millions and millions of acres of crops, plants. We plant fruit trees that, that clean the air and provide us with food. Whether we're talking avocados or apples and peaches and cherries and all that, you know, nut trees. And we do a lot of good things for the planet also. It's unbelievable that they think that we're bad. But yeah, they're the ones who want to change the world, right? Now, this is what frosted my fucking cake, pardon my French, last week and the week before and the week before that, I kept hearing clean air. We've cleaned the air up too much and now clean air is causing climate change. And I just, it, it went in one ear and just pissed me off. I'm like, okay, so dirty air is causing climate change and clean air is, is climate change. You know, they're telling the truth. Climate change happens from clean air, dirty air. Uh, it happens. Climate change happens in the summer and it happens in the winter and every season. Yeah, climate change is natural. But it's tiny, right? Oh, a cloud went by between me and the sun. Is that climate change? Yeah, it just changed the way I feel about everything. Unfucking believable But these idiots, these insane morons, they want to put up, what, sky bubbles or space foam they want to put a solar shield, I guess, in the upper atmosphere slash uh, low Earth orbit, the size of Brazil. They want to put this foamy, bubbly crap up there. They want to shoot it up in rockets and just have it expand out there, some kind of space foam. Why? Why do they want to block the sun? What does the sun do? Well, it, it warms the planet. It creates clouds. We need the sun to warm the oceans to create the steam that forms the clouds that then float over the land and rain water. If you block the sun, well, you get a dry, dusty planet. Block the sun. I mean, this, this is their plan, folks. This is what these elites want to do. They're the ones who want to change it. They're the ones who want to modify it. They're the ones who want to develop technologies that... that are just incredible, right? You and I driving around in our car, nothing compared to what these people are proposing that they do to our planet. And it is our planet. It's not their planet. It really isn't their planet. Klaus Schwab and, and uh, George Soros, Bill Gates, you know, they don't own the planet. Zark Muckerberg does not own the planet. Joe Biden doesn't own the planet. Al Gore, no. No, none of these people own the planet. We all do. It's our place, and there's plenty of room on it for us. Unbelievable what's going on. Thank you, Gary D., very much. Uh, we will move on to the next topic. <sighs> and it's incredible. Un, un, unbelievable what's going on. Uh oh, <laughs> Muho with a $50 super chat donation. And this is a tall one, man. He says, Semper Fi, folks. And Semper Fi means always faithful. Faithful to what you believe in your head and your heart. What you know to be right. Semper Fi. Ooh. <clears throat> It's very potent. <laughs> he says, so much more to say, but what we don't say says it all. 
Well, that's an interesting way to put it. What we don't say says it all. Yeah, they want to stop us. They want to silence us. You know, if we can't speak freely, then they own us. So that's why I say, you know, speak freely, be yourself, be free, right? They want to control us. Absolutely. It's unbelievable, isn't it? How much they control us. It's time to break free of that. And it starts up here with the prepared mind. Have you any idea how six six successful censorship is on TV? Don't don't know the answer. Hmm. Successful, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is incredible. Okay, Jolene, who do we got next in the world of super chats? We got oh shoot, Mister Skylight with a forty nine ninety nine super chat donation. He says character and fate are two words for the same thing. Same thing that. Uh, Mr. Skylight's famous here on The Prepared Mind for his uh, quotes. And this is the 18th century German philosopher uh, and mystic, Novalis. And uh, we're going to have to think on this one. Character and fate are two words for the same thing. Now, what I like about philosophy is if you're a, a new student of it or somewhere uh, in the very experienced in or anywhere in the middle, a, a quote or a philosophical statement causes us to think. And uh, we'll all get something different from it. But it's very nature being philosophy. Uh, it, it causes you to think, how is it the character, who we are as people, and the fate that we run into? How are those words for the same thing? It probably means something to you, and it certainly means a lot to me. My character and my fate. They're two words for the same thing to me because we meet. We meet today. We've met in the past, and we'll meet again in the future because one drives the other. My character helps me meet my fate, and my fate creates the character that's in me. Thank you very much, Mr. Skylight. I appreciate that. And if we shall, let's. Let's move on again. We got Crazy Uncle <laughs> with a $10 super chat donation. And here it is. Thank you for the $10, Crazy Uncle. He says, prepper tip. If you're looking for a simple prep, then try pasta and the just add water flavor and sauce packets. Fairly cheap and no additional step to prep. Feeds a family of four to six. Plus, they're tasty. Uh, I agree with that. When I went to the RMZ, went to the jungle. I took the Thrive Life. Thank you, Jolene. Let me know as we go. I took to the jungle Thrive Life, uh, their meal packets. And all I had to do was collect some rainwater. Not the easiest thing to do. Collect some rainwater and then put them in the packets, soak them, stir them up and eat. And uh, they're tasty. Now, here's my recommendation that I'm going to add to Crazy Uncle's Prepper Tip. Variety, having at least four or five different flavors, right? Okay. It's incredible. And having the flavor and sauce packets. That's why I say spices. And Crispy Bacon and I kind of got in this uh, competition to see who gets the most spices and sauces uh, stored up. and keep them uh, underneath the kitchen sink, uh, the cabinets. You've got to have spices, folks. When I was in the RMZ, I had all of these different packets of food, right? Different flavors. I had a, a stored up a bunch of granola bars. I had a lot of different things to eat. But not as much as we have on a regular daily basis. And uh, surprisingly, I, I mean, I was surprised. I got tired. I got tired of eating them. You've got to have good variety. That's why I recommend having canned meats, spam, tuna fish, beef, pork, chicken, right? Shredded beef, ground beef, whatever you can get, right? Get cans of stew. Have a good variety. It's psychological, right? It needs to taste good. You need to have spices and you need to have some variety. Because our diet actually requires it, as discussed earlier about dog and cat food, right? 
we are omnivores and we need animal protein, not bug protein, animal protein. Right? If you've ever seen a hardcore vegetarian that doesn't eat fish, they just eat just plants. Not really healthy looking people. All right, <clears throat> moving on. Thank you, Crazy Uncle, for that recommendation. Always love those prepper tips. And we got Jennifer Stevens checking in with a massive 1999 super chat donation. And she says, oh, my God, just bought a 12 gauge. That's a shotgun, folks. kel -Tec. Is there a less kicker for someone who weighs 130 pounds? I have a lot of toys, but can't shoot one of these. Want to, though. Um, my recommendation uh, for people who understand the value of a shotgun, and I'm not giving you Joe Biden talk here, folks. I think shotgun is really a terrific short-range self-defense weapon, self-defense tool, right? self-defense item. Um, but the 12-gauge has an immense kick. <laughs> Kicks like a freaking mule. My recommendation is go with a 20 gauge. It is uh, substantially, thank you, Jolene, substantially less, shall we say, energetic. You know, so if you only weigh 130 pounds or 150 pounds or 110 pounds or whatever, you can shoot a 20 gauge a lot more. Another um, longtime super subscriber here, name withheld, uh, got a 12 gauge and realized it was just too much kick. Right. And they ended up buying and going to a 20 gauge uh, at very close range. Right. Self-defense ranges. A 20 gauge uh, is nasty. You can get buckshot for them. There's a lot more, shall we say, ammunition options between uh, slugs and triple lot, double lot, single lot buck. Number two, there's a lot more options and availability in 12 gauge. But it is, you know, those good things are available in 20 gauge. Just an incredible, shall we say, tool. You know, if you need to reach out like AT&T and touch someone, uh, I recommend uh, the AR-15. But for close range, self-defense, buckshot, any buckshot you can get in either a 12 or a 20 gauge, I think you are really going to take care of business if you ever have to be uh, in that situation. Uh, they do make uh, they do make some very interesting shotgun platforms. Now they have an AR style shotgun. Okay, there I know several women that have gotten them. Um, <clears throat> they're just they they look they look very porcupineish. Let's put it that way. But right? if you see someone wielding one of these, you don't want to mess with them. I mean, that's what happens when you see a United States Marine or a U.S. soldier. Because you're like, you know, these people are trained and dressed and they're armed with the tools, right? The tools of the trade. You don't want to mess with them, right? And that's really, you know, and, and folks, trust me, you don't want to get shot with anything. A 22, a shotgun, you don't want to get shot with anything. It hurts, right? <clears throat> Anyways, that's my best recommendation for you, Jennifer, is to drop down to a 20 gauge. And uh, I don't think you're going to give up a whole lot of reach and firepower, but it does make it a lot more comfortable. And there's one more note here I want to bring up. When you are scared out of your freaking mind, when you're scared to death, when you think you're going to die, the adrenaline that will be rushing through your body is incredible. You won't feel the kick the way you would normally. You're going to be scared to death, though, and it um, it's it's an incredible feeling. So, you know, that's why practicing uh, with a firearm while you're calm and under normal circumstances is important to get down the mechanics. You know, where does my hand go? Where does my hand go? How do I operate this? So that if you're put in that super stressful situation, you'll be able to function a whole lot better than otherwise. If you're scared out of your mind and panicked and you don't know what the hell you're doing with this thing in your hands, that's why you need the practice. And if you don't understand it, um, go and get professional uh, training at, uh, at, a, at a gun range slash gun store. I just, I think it's really invaluable. Okay, let's do this. We're at 90 minutes into this uh, Zoo Sunday Night Live. 
And I think we've got more to go. And we're holding 500 people live. And it's Crazy Uncle back in the house with prepper tip number two for the night. He says, with cotton about to be in short supply, it would be a great idea to get what women need that is mainly cotton. I would recommend that everyone has a ample supply of things that they're going to need that, well, you may not get. Right? Whether it's uh, feminine hygiene products, folks, you can't, you just cannot underestimate the value of good socks. A good cotton poly blend sock. Get good socks and good underwear. But you've got to take care of your feet. You get a cut on your feet, you're toast. Right? You slice a foot open, you 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 know, this is you've got to take care of your feet. Thank you, Jolene. You've got to take care of your feet. Your feet are it. Without your feet, you're not mobile. Without your feet, you're not good for much of anything. Right. And uh, in addition to having good socks, you need good footwear that fits correctly and protects your feet and your ankles. Right. It is incredibly difficult to walk if you injure an ankle, a mechanical injury, sprained ankle, or uh, just is you're done. You're stuck. When I was in the RMZ, that was my literal number one biggest fear were foot injuries. Because I knew the hospital was, well, miles away. And it wasn't really a hospital. It was a clinic. And I didn't really think there were doctors there. I figured that they were some kind of medical personnel. Very scary. Right. And I was like, I don't need an infection, even though I had lots of, well, in case my fish needed antibiotics. I knew I was good on that, but I didn't want an infection, but I knew a mechanical injury would have been very hard for me to walk out and get out. You know, anyways, um, it's a big topic, folks. Big topic. Uh, there's so much to thinking about what happens in an emergency situation. Right? What happens? What happens next? What if I get an injury? What if, right? And you're not going to be comfortable. One of the things I noticed when I went out in the field as a jarhead was, you you know, just regular living in the barracks kind of sucked. You know, I'm living here with 80 fucking guys in the barracks and it sucked. But when you go out in the field, there's no barracks. There's no toilets. You know, the best you've got is a couple of canteens and... Every now and then, someone will park a water buffalo, a big water tank that you can refill your canteens. That's your drink. You know, and then uh, getting MREs is, is just not great. I mean, you, it's food. You know, but you, you just realize, man, how good do I got it in normal times? You know, you don't realize after being in the field for two weeks how bad you stink and how good a hot shower feels or a bath or bathing at all. So, yeah, when I was in the RMZ, I put aside a gallon of water a day to wash. And, I, you know, I had that big, uh, actually, I had a five-gallon solar water heater. It was just basically a big bag that the, the sun penetrated and heated the water. And, you know, it had five gallons in it. And I just turned it on and hosed myself off. And it was like, oh, my God, I feel like a human being again. Unbelievable. That's why this cotton Whatever cotton products you need and toilet paper, and that's important. But socks and underwear, good golly, the difference between being comfortable and uncomfortable in those uh, <clears throat> very private areas and your feet. Take care of your feet. Take care of your ass. All right. Um, we've got to, let's do this. Let's change the subject and get out of that zone and and see. We got uh, we got Gamma Nay. Checking in with a 1776 super chat donation. 1776, one of my favorite numbers of all time. Ah, Gamma Nay says, uh, John, prepared mother. That's Jolene and moderators. That would be Kaz and Uman and, and others. Just wanted to say thank you for all that you do. You are welcome. Uh, I'll say it for all of us. You're welcome. This is something we take a great deal of satisfaction in doing and, and pride. I've been here talking since December of 2013, almost 10 years. This December will be 10 years. 
And there's a great deal of satisfaction because of you guys. Um, the, um, shall I say, respect, support, affection that I get from everyone's incredible. People that email me, text me, know me personally, after years of coordinated uh, contact, it's incredible. It truly is incredible the way you guys treat me and it's wonderful. I couldn't do this without you. And I wouldn't want to do it without you. So as much as you appreciate us, we really appreciate you. I know Jolene is here because it, it's, it satisfies her. Thank you, Jolene. Just got a message from her as well. <laughs> if, if, if there wasn't a lot of satisfaction to it, she wouldn't be here. If Uman right, didn't, didn't get what he got, he wouldn't be here. If Crispy Bacon didn't give a shit, right, he wouldn't be doing what he's doing. And if you guys didn't give a flying rat's ass, you wouldn't be here either. So it's great to have everyone here participating at every level and supporting us in every way that you do. Right. Uh, I, I'm hearing from people that move around the country. They, they leave one state and go to another. They, they say, I, I'm finally doing what I need to do. I needed to get out of California. I needed to get out of Washington state. And I needed to get out of Northern California and head east. I needed to get right to where I'm going. I needed to leave Illinois and get down to Kentucky. I, I'm hearing a lot of this from a lot of people. Uh, Prepper Coach with John, right, which you can, uh, you can get a session of that scheduled on the preparedmind.club. Prepper Coach where you sit down, right, we set a time and a date and we talk for an hour uh, video to video. If you have to have good internet connection. If you don't have good internet connection, then I can do a phone call with you. But if you've got good internet speed, then we can do a video conference and you can tell me all about your preps, ask for uh, my opinion on things, and I can coach you on whatever you want to talk about. Or just a bullshit session where we sit down and just bullshit. Because in a lot of ways, folks, you don't feel like you're alone. Right. That as good as this is, where where we meet here on the preparedmind.club or subscribestar.com, where you can sign up for our premium service, or whether it's at the zoo here on YouTube, right? That's good. But just having a, a personalized one-on-one -on -one session. Uh, I've discovered uh, over the years, in fact, that it just has um, uh, a different value, a different value to it. All right. <clears throat> So enough of that before I get too sappy. Thank you for the great support, though. Uh, 1776, what an awesome number. And that number continues to come up, folks, continues. We're at an hour and 40 minutes. We got about another 40 minutes in this before I sign off. But as always, if there's more Super Chat donations, Super Chat donations, if there's more of them, then guess what? I'll stay after two hours until we get all the questions answered. And we have the Piping Shrike. With $10, is that Australian dollars or is that Argentine dollars <laughs> or is that Austrian dollars? You never know. He says, nice shirt. I got the green one. Oh, yes. Yes. We did. Uh, I did a uh, uh, blue, black, green and maroon. And I think they're all handsome. They're uh, dry fit sports shirts. They look great, feel great and piss off. The leftists when they read it, but what are they going to do? I mean, walk up and give you a hard time. Anyways, thank you, Piping Trike. Um, we sent this shirt, folks, down to Australia. We sent them up to Ireland. We sent them all over the country, folks, all over the world. It was great. It was really cool. Okay, now, <clears throat> while we're talking about countries, let's talk about the great country, the United States of America. You're going to love this. We were talking about water problems earlier. Well, in Los Angeles, guess what they want to do? You think shit has hit the fan? You you worried about health? L.A. wants to recycle their sewer water and not just use it for watering lawns and, you know, filling ponds and landscapes. They want to turn it back into tap water and put it back in the pipe for you to drink. <laughs> That's right. Trust your government. I mean, it's hard enough to trust them with, well, what's coming out of the pipe now? Literally, what's coming out of there? They say it's drinking water, 
right? But every now and then you turn on the water and you see some dirty stuff come out. You're like, yeah, where'd that come from? What is that? Right? It's supposed to be purified and sanitized. And that's why I really recommend at the preparedmind.club, I really recommend the Berkey water filter or our other water filtration systems that are available there. You've got ones for home, ones for camping, bugging out. There's all kinds of different water filtration uh, equipment that we market through our affiliates at the preparedmind.club. But folks, literally, the government is starting to say, let's turn toilet water that you've crapped in back into drinking water. Now, there's a reason, folks, in Europe for hundreds of years, going back a thousand years, people didn't drink water. You're like, well, what did they drink, John? They didn't have soda pop. No, they had and made everything into alcohol, beer, or distilled spirits, right? Or wine. You literally, if you needed liquid refreshment, you drank wine, beer, or distilled spirits to get your H2O because it kills germs and because everyone polluted streams and creeks and you drink that water and you get sick. Well, that's when the, the world population was, you know, probably 500 million. Now we're, you know, it's incredible how many people there are and all the pollution out there. And they want to, they want us to trust them folks, right? I really recommend getting, if you don't have it, water filtration systems through the preparedmind.club. You got to do that. You got to do that. Uh, uh, the, the world is full of wacky people. Did you know that the uh, would-be assassin that went after Supreme Court Justice Kavanaugh, did you know that he identifies as trans? Yeah, he, he, he planned to kill three folks, three Supreme Court of the United States. He wanted to kill three justices. That was what this guy, this trans man planned. And I want to bring this topic up. Mental illness. Mental illness, anyone? A would-be assassin. Is he right in the head or is he not? He wants to chop off his weenie and pretend he has women's chromosomes. Is that mental illness? Right. Remember the pink ponytailed having or piggy-tailed having Highland Park murderer of Illinois? He dressed as a girl while committing multiple murders, mental illness, anyone? Are we seeing a pattern yet? It's no longer an anecdotal pattern. It's no longer, in my opinion, uh, hyperbole. It's, it's no longer anecdotal to say, you know, I think these people are wacko. It's not, it's not paranoia on our part. It's not trans or rainbow phobia on our part. It's a pattern of behavior that shows a mental illness, kind of like the people that want to normalize uh, pedophilia. They want to say that they're attracted to minors. Uh, they're, they, they say, I'm a minor attracted person. Well, that sounds a little different than to say, well, I'm a pedophilia person. Okay, what if, I don't even know, pedophile, that's what they are. These, these pedophiles out there want to change the words. Minor attracted, right? A lot of these drag queens are getting arrested now because they're they're performing for children and then they're molesting children. Isn't that interesting how they they act sexual in front of children and it turns them on and then they I guess seek it elsewhere and more and then it's, these people are sick. They're murderous perverts. I see a pattern there. I don't think it's really that hard to understand. I really don't. Now I want to go full circle, full circle, back to the very beginning of the show. We still have 15 minutes left, so get your super chats in if you want to talk to the world and share with them your ideas, your questions, your comments. But get this. Remember, we're, we're saying, well, people are dying. They, they want to get rid of people. Oh, yeah, there was another 20-year-old. Earlier, it was a 21-year-old swimmer. How about a 20-year-old college basketball star, right? Uh, cardiac arrest, summer camp unexpectedly dies. Anyone want to take a guess? 
anyone. Do you think maybe this person took a cold shower? Because that's what the experts say. You can take a cold shower. Unbelievable. All right, let's get to your super chat donation. See what we got coming up. We've got Red Pill Files with a 556 super chat donation. And he said, hey, John, I've been going down the smart cities rabbit hole. They want to have 50% of U.S. land prohibited for humans. Comments. Mm-hmm. Well, it came out the other day that in the Middle East, way over there, they want to build a, you know, a, a quarter mile wide city, 120 stories tall, uh, faced on both sides with glass, mirrored glass, and have this run, you know, 100 or so miles from water source to water source. They want to keep people in this wall, a city wall. You know, it's, it's, it's very wide and they want it to be self-sustaining, all this. this. This is another example of the smart city idea they're trying to develop. They want what human population there is to be contained in these cities. It reminds me very much of Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. They want to keep people holed up. People are not allowed to be free. You can't go where you want. You can't travel freely. Everything has to do with how, well, what your job is and who you are and how you've been educated, right? Will they have wristbands or a chip? Right. How will you get anywhere? Do anything without permission. These smart cities, you don't get to have a house. You don't even get to have an apartment. You get to have a cubicle. There are people living like this already, folks, all around the world. Japan is really uh, known for it. Hong Kong, where you can't afford an entire apartment. You can afford essentially a bed and your few belongings and a little bit of clothes. And that's it. It is unbelievable. It's unfreaking believable. But yeah, they want that for all of us. They want the population down and those who are left kept in high density, smart cities. That's what they're after, truly. That's what they would love to do to us, folks. If we're all stuck in a city, whether it's, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, New York, Chicago, LA, San Francisco, Miami, Dallas, whatever city you're in, they own your ass. They don't want you to have cars so you can go where you want and affect the change that you know is yours. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they want more than 90% of the world. I think they want 99% of the world to be theirs. And yeah, you get to live in one of their smart cities. Lucky you. Now you're an animal in the zoo. And that's why I love doing the zoo broadcast here because I say, get out, right? This is the zoo and it we're breaking out. <laughs> Check out the thumbnail. All right, Jolene, what else have we got out there? We got Steve Bishop with a $20 super chat donation. He says, Semper Fi, Brother John. And I say Semper Fi to you, Steve. He says, there is a rumor that DeSantis and Trump are teaming up for the 2024 presidential ticket. What say you? Well, I'm going to tell you what. I really believe... Got it, Jolene. I really believe that Trump is going to run 2024. Um, it's not just the golf bag that Eric Trump had. It's not just the 2024 painted on the Trump uh, jet. It's not just him coming out and campaigning. I believe that um, uh, as much of a, a megalomaniac as he is, he really does love America. I believe that. He is far from perfect. All right, I got that one, Jolene. Okay, uh, I believe he is. Now, uh, as far as a quality president, the work that Governor DeSantis has been doing over there in the state of Florida has me in um, political awe, if you will. Oh, he's doing a great job. He really is. If you look what he's doing for children, to free them from critical race theory, to free them from being groomed by a bunch of sexual perverts in the school system to see what DeSantis is doing about the voting laws and other laws. I know people just like Trump there. He's not perfect. I'm not saying he's perfect, but he's really doing a lot like governor Abbott over in Texas, governor DeSantis over in Florida is saying, let's bus our illegals up to Washington DC and New York city. I say, good, do it. 
I think that uh, DeSantis would best be served running in 2028. Now, in the polling and that's out there, Trump stomps DeSantis. Does DeSantis need to be the vice president? I think he would do more good for the Floridians to stay there and take care of that state and then step up and deal with the whole country. Now, if Trump cannot drain the swamp and kill all the swamp monsters and fire all the worthless bureaucrats and depoliticize that pile of shit called D.C., if he can't do that, then DeSantis couldn't. Why should DeSantis go up north to Washington, D.C., just to be stonewalled by a bunch of career criminals. And by criminals, I mean felonious piles of shit, gangsters and thugs, because that's what DC is full of. I think Trump is far more suited to dealing with those type of people. He survived literally four years of that shit. And I, I would rather send him back there and say, go ahead, dude, deal with it. Deal with it. Get rid of him and turn the fucking page on these scumbags. 1776, you bet. If not, give me some 1860. It's coming. It's coming, folks. We're going to have partisan war in this country. It's coming. Get prepared. Do I want it? No. Is it going to happen? I think so. Prepare for the worst. Pray for the best. All right, let's move on. We're running out of time. It's ticking down, but I'll stay you with you here. Oh, here we go. We got Bonnie Blue, two-way. With a $49.99 super chat donation. Bottoms up, Bonnie. <clears throat> Woo! She says, here's a few gallons of diesel for the green beast. Thank you very much for feeding my mode of transportation. I appreciate that a whole lot. Pow! <laughs> wow. Well, that'll, <clears throat> that'll lubricate the sprockets. Yikes. Thank you very much. No, Bonnie has uh, been a great supporter of ours for years, folks. Many of you have been here for years. Some of you from the very beginning. I think that you too um, felt the calling. And that's really what this is uh, for me. It's a calling at this point. You know, I could, I could literally go and do some other job, right? I could. Um, I could do a number of things for a living. i there's, I've, I've looked around at some jobs and I thought, you know, I could go do that, but they want me to work 50, 60, 70 hours a week for minuscule pay. And, and, you know, I'd rather work for myself, right? Pounding a few nails and doing some projects and, and spend more time here doing this. This is what I think uh, is far more, is far more well, life enriching for me to do this than anything else. You know, apart from being a dad, this job has been the most fulfilling in my life, you know, and uh, sons are all grown up. And so this is, this really is my baby now getting the world prepared, sharing my perspective, bringing in satire and humor, making fun of idiots, right? Pointing out what is happening in ways that others are missing. And I think really covering the entire spectrum of all the shit that's out there. Ah, yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, folks. Now, I got a big question right, as we wrap the show up, speaking of satire. right? Quadruple Jim Jones juiced. President Gigi Biden tested positive for Cerveza bug, claims that he got over it, made fun of President Trump, and then gets, gets it again, test positive again. Restarts isolation again, right? That means he was contagious the whole time. How many kids did he breathe on? How many people did that guy infect? Right? How, many, how much sniffing does this guy do on a regular basis? It's unbelievable. Folks, this coming week, we are going to see some shit that is going to be mind-blowing. I think it's going to surround... Nancy Pelosi and what she's doing over in Asia and her husband. I think there's going to be some big shit coming out about Hunter Biden. I think, I think Joe Biden is going to disappear. I think so. I don't know if they're going to let him go live on some tropical island somewhere 
you know, and, and put put a uh, I don't know a wig on there to disguise them. You know, whether they're just going to say no, that's Walter the puppet. That's not that's not the real Joe Biden. I don't know what's coming for him, but I don't think it's good. I, I think that they're they're done with him. I think he's done enough damage around this popsicle stand. It's time to get rid of him. You know, I really think that this week is going to have some big things happening. And we've got problems with the money system, problems with the economy, problems with financing, problems with banking, problems with inflation, problems with energy. Over in Europe, they're really getting some blowback for what's been done. We're seeing what Sri Lanka, Indonesia, we're seeing Pakistan and other countries, Iraq. Folks, over the weekend in Iraq, the people... They, they committed what in America would be called an insurrection, right? Over in Iraq, they charged and broke into parliament. Why? Because they didn't want those government officials to show up and pass more laws. They said, you know, they're tired of the, the laws that are being passed. So they're interrupting their ability to pass more shitty laws in Iraq. That's right. Iraq, the country that America liberated from. Saddam Hussein helped set up a form of government. Well, it wasn't a constitutional republic like we have. It was an inferior form of parliamentary control, which has allowed a bureaucratic nonsense and corruption to prevail. And the people are pissed and they've taken over Congress. They've taken over their parliament. Well, God bless them. I hope that they win their freedom if that's what they're after. I sure hope that's what they're after. Well, they certainly don't like despotism, so why would they vote in a new version of it? I don't know. I know it's a completely different culture, but wow. All right. <clears throat> I think we got one more super chat coming in. And it, oh my goodness, it's Cottage Farm with a $100 super chat donation. Ah, and she's got a hell of a topic to talk about. Semper Fi, thank you, Cottage Farm, for always supporting what we do here. Down the hatch. This is a big one, too. Whoa, man. Thank you. All right. Oh, and by the way, thank you, uh, Cottage Farm, also for last week for encouraging all that bad behavior uh, <clears throat> when we had the Sunday Nights of the Round Table on. We'll have to do that again. It's going to come up. I talked to everyone. They really like that. All right. So let's see what Cottage Farm wanted to talk about. She says, when do you think they'll pull the Nazi game on Christian nationalists? Do you think we're able to stop it this time? Well, yes, I really do. Um, the, the Nazi game. They're trying to call... The people who love America, the true Americans, they're trying to call us Nazis. That's really what they're up to. They're trying to call us Nazis if you love America. So they want to say, well, you're a nationalist. You love America. We're like, yeah, we love America. Being a Christian and being a nationalist, well, they're trying to say as a Nazi. The View tried it with TP USA. Uh, they tried that, and it's it failed. In fact, the view, uh, the girls, the pigs of the view, may end up in a big fat lawsuit, getting their asses sued off. Um, I think the stomach that Americans have for this leftist nonsense, Cottage Farm, I think we've stomached as much as we can. the The bald face lies don't hold water. The um, shall we say Nazi Joseph Goebel Ministry of Propaganda approach, it's pretty transparent. So saying that Christians are Nazis is fucking ridiculous. Saying that people who love America is fucking ridiculous. It is obscene, right? To say, well, you're, you're, you're a Republican, you're a Christian, you're a nationalist, you're an American. You know, that means you, you love slavery 
and you you love uh, destroying right uh, little people and and you're you're intolerant and you're a bigot and you're a homophobe and you're a xenophobe and you're all of these negative things i don't think people are buying it now maybe 50% of the population the democrat side can be swayed by that this is just my opinion it's just my opinion uh, they can be swayed by it, but I know that even half of them don't wholeheartedly believe it. And those Democrat scumbags that would look at you, Cottage Farm, and say, oh, a white woman. Oh, I bet she's a Christian. I bet I bet she's a Republican and a nationalist, and therefore she's a Nazi, and she, you know, she uses her white privilege and 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 she would enslave people if she had the opportunity. Uh, I think the people that believe that are so hate-filled, anti-American, right, that, that you know, you, you couldn't convince them that you're a good person or otherwise, and there's no need to. These people are just going to go down. They're going to burn themselves out. You can see it how the, the radical left attacks themselves. And by themselves, I mean they, the radical left attacks other radical leftists. Radical lesbians do not like the radical trans crowd. Because radical lesbians believe that no man could ever understand what it's like to be a woman. So how can a man claim to be a woman? And then everyone has to accept it. So the radical lesbians hate the radical trans crowd. Right? It, it's, it's unbelievable. right? And the more moderate Democrat that is a Christian, right? Uh, they, they believe in life. But they don't want to tell their other more radical Democrat friends that uh, you know, abortion's wrong. And so they don't even really support themselves really well. And right? I think they're a very weak and divisive group of people that uh, they need something to unify themselves behind. And so they do that. They hate America. That they're pretty, they're pretty much unified on. But for what reason? So they pick an icon, someone like Trump or someone like DeSantis, someone like Governor Abbott, uh, someone like Alex Jones. And they use them as their their pariah, their bad guy that they hold them up and they say, see, we we hate that guy because that guy or girl, Carrie Lake in Arizona, for example, that girl like Chris, uh, like Bobert or uh, Big Marge, that girl represents everything we hate. So everything she likes, we hate. In fact, a uh, big Marge over the weekend was out uh, proclaiming the goodness of being a, a Christian nationalist. Kind of like the, um, oh, one second. Oh, yes. There we go. Kind of like <laughs> uh, when the Democrats tried saying that, um, you know, the MAGA crowd, the super MAGA crowd, the, the uber MAGA crowd, whatever MAGA crowd, you know, they tried making make America great again people bad by adding more words and letters. Right. And instead, we turned it into a, a marketing promotional thing. We're like, yeah, I'm ultra mag. I'm ultra maga. Right. I'm right. And what's the other one? You know, America first. We're America first. We're mega America first. Anything you can say, anything they call us, we just accept it. Yeah, we're all about make America great again. Instead of you know treating it as an insult, we treat it as a badge of honor. You want to call me a Christian nationalist? You're damn right. I'm a Christian nationalist. Right? The, the Christianity I believe in doesn't go around killing people that we don't agree with. Right? You know, the Christianity I believe in believes in freedom and liberty and equality, right? And not and not victimizing others. Right? The nationalist in me believes in the goodness of America based on our Christian values and our constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and our intolerance for scumbags that would destroy others, kill others, and steal from others. And that's what justice is, right? Justice doesn't allow a criminal institution, whether it's the mafia or a gang or a tyrannical government to exist. We remove them. That's what a Christian nationalist does. That's really how I look at it. And I don't think that's radical. If we follow the, the, uh, <clears throat> the well, it's still not worn out, but, you know, Extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice, right? I think that's axiomatic. I think it's axiomatic. 
anyways, Cottage Farm, thank you again for your just awesome support. Thank you to everyone for your awesome support. This has been a great zoo. And again, I'm going to have the uh, nights, the Sunday nights of the round table. I'm going to have them all back. Have them all back. I would like to have, uh, I'd like to have another special guest uh, come in on that. Maybe it'll be Alaska Prepper or, or maybe uh, Prepper Nation. Maybe it'll be um, a surprise. We'll find out who gets to join us at the Knights of the Round Table uh, and, and have that happen again here on Sunday Night Live at the Zoo. I want to thank you guys, though, for coming, sharing, participating. Be sure and hit the notification bell. And folks, above all else, get prepared, fully prepared. Chance favors the prepared mind. It absolutely does. Go to the preparedmind.club, sign up for our premium service. We've got a lot of great material there. In addition to videos that you can participate in Monday through Friday with me live, we've got morning videos that you get before everyone else. And then you've got the live videos in the afternoon. You've got access to the store. Oh, got access to the store which has everything you need to get prepared. Okay, it looks like we got, uh-oh, we got someone checking in right here at the end. Um, <laughs> and it's Matthew D with another $20 super chat donation through PayPal. Thank you, Matthew D. And he says, have one more cigar. Well, I'll tell you what, I think I'm going to. <laughs> I really appreciate that. That will buy me a damn fine cigar. I think I'll get me one of those Arturo Fuente Hemingways, if I can find one, so, while supplies last. Thank you again, Matthew, and thank you to everybody. Folks, I guess I'm a Christian nationalist, but far, far, far from being a stinking Nazi or a fascist or a communist. I'm an American. I know you are, too. So God bless you. God bless America. Semper Fi means always faithful, and chance favors the prepared mind. Aren't you glad you're a prepper? And you are. So get prepped. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>